Hi again everybody. Welcome to my latest video. Well in this video I'm going to do a product review. I have this LG ultra wide monitor 29 inches and it includes quite a few advanced features to it as we'll see. Up on the screen right now I'm going to put the different prices that I was able to look up first at Newegg and then at Amazon and then finally at Micro Center which is where I wound up purchasing this from. You'll get an idea to compare it. I'll also put up the specifications that'll show exactly what are the details of this. The fact it includes IPS and HDR and a few other very nice features to it. Let me open it up. It hasn't been opened up yet. Now, just like the previous review I did on the 4K 27-inch LG, it comes with the testing specification sheet that was run on this particular device. Let's see. This is the stand. I'll leave that out because I will be setting it up on a stand, and I'll, I'll show how it looks once it's been put on the stand. It looks like it's very similar to the stand I did for the other monitor. Oh, sort of a bag of goodies here. Let me open this up. Oh, it looks like we have the, the rest of the monitor stand, a handling guide, power supply, of course, very similar to the other LG 4K ones that I did. And it uh, includes a power cable. That's part of that. A couple of screws for the base and the secondary part for the base as well. And what does it include? Uh, warranty, protection, and a user manual. So, oh, one more thing. It includes what looks like here. It's an HDMI cable. So this one does not come with a DisplayPort cable, but actually I have a couple of those left over because I really didn't use the ones that came with my other two of them, the two 4K LG monitors that I purchased. And just like the last one, it includes a CD, DVD, I guess to load software drivers or manuals, more detailed manuals or whatever. Okay, let's pull this off. Got here, seems like it's upside down right now. Let me put it right side up. This is just like the uh, 4K ones that I have. By the way, I did a review on one of them, but I actually purchased two of those 4K monitors, if you're interested. The colors aren't lined exactly right, so that's something I still have to work on to get them a little bit more tuned. But other than that, I'm happy with those monitors. This one is just a 1080p, it's not a 4K. It was purchased because of the extra real estate that's on the screen, not because of uh, the resolution per se. So on the back, it has the same connectors that we saw before. So if you look back here, you will see we have a display port connector, two HDMI cables, looks like a headphone connector, and the power connector, and of course the connector for the base. So let me go ahead and get the base on, and then we'll be able to test it out. I have my backup gaming slash editing rig. Looks like it's pretty straightforward, just like the last one. And by the way, I'll be showing you how to configure this. And it has the same single button to get to the menuing system on the bottom here, just like the 4K LG monitors that I have. And voila, we have the monitor up and running. Well, oh, oh, it'll be running in a moment. Okay, let me hook it up to the computer and see what it looks like. Okay, there it goes, all set up. I haven't connected to my backup editing rig. Nice wide screen. Let me see if I can do something interesting here. Let me try the Heaven benchmark and see what it looks like. Do a run.
Not bad, not bad at all. Looks nice and clear. White screen. this now. I think that proves a point. Looks nice and clear. Nice white screen. The resolution that it's in is a 2560 by 1080. That's recommended and that's what it defaulted to as soon as it came up. Okay, let me take a quick look at the menuing system. You push the little button on the bottom here in order to get into the menuing system. Push the little button again and you see the menuing system. This acts like a little joystick. So over to the right here, you have all of the menus. You can set the brightness. You can set the which input you want. Obviously, I'm at HDMI 2, which it defaulted to and happened to catch it. I can set the picture quality. I can set the sound level. It's actually pretty low right now. I can set the general settings. I can go down and change any of these settings that I want. I'm going to go back here. We want to see the sound, what options there are. We can change those. I'm using that little button as a joystick. Same thing here. Go over, pick the choice that I want. Of course, the input, you can change whatever you want. If I wanted to redefine it as a different one than HDMI 2, I could then hit it again. And I have a choice of HDMI 1 or DisplayPort. I will be using DisplayPort on this. When I go back, then they have the quick settings. You want to change your brightness, your contrast, volume. Those are sort of a summary of the more detailed ones below. So that's the, uh, that's the menu setting that's on this monitor. Pretty good. Well, I think that covers the quick review that I wanted to do. By the way, how does my channel look in widescreen like this? Anyway, I hope you got something out of this. And if you did, my head will pop up here in a moment right above the monitor. Please do me a favor subscribe to my channel. It'll help this channel grow quite a bit. I'd really appreciate it. I thank you for watching and until the next time, take care.